Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you to you and the Government for enabling us to have this debate today. I stood on a manifesto to maintain international aid funding at 0.7% of GNI. Not just that, we said we will proudly maintain our commitment yeah, to spend 0.7% yeah. of GNI on development. Now, early last year, the pandemic hit. It had an immediate negative effect on the economy. Yet in September 2020, when that effect on the economy had been seen, when public spending was increasing, when the government was already borrowing hundreds of billions of pounds, the government confirmed in its response to the fourth report of the International Development Select Committee that it would honour that manifesto commitment, saying a commitment enshrined in law and one to which the new department, the FCDO, will honour its responsibilities. It went on to say that investing that 0.7% was at the heart of the vision of the government's integrated review for the UK as an active internationalist, problem-solving and burden-sharing nation. Where is that vision now, as the government turns its back on some of the poorest in the world? With GNI falling, our funding for aid was falling in any case. To reduce it from 0.7 to 0.5% is a double blow. This isn't about palaces for dictators and vanity projects. It's about what cuts to funding mean, that fewer girls will be educated, more girls and boys will become slaves, more children will go hungry, and more of the poorest people in the world will die. Now, the government has promised what they see as a compromise, and I'm grateful to the Chancellor for speaking to me last night. I asked uh, how long it would take before the tests are met and we return to 0.7%. I was told four to five years, but it could be sooner because the economy is recovering so well. Now, if the motion is defeated tonight, it would be 0.7% from January next year. The government appears to be saying to us, we can't afford 0.7% next year because the economy is doing so badly, but actually the economy is doing so well that we could very well be able to restore 0.7% very soon. But the government can't have it both ways. And I certainly doubt whether the tests will ever be met in five years' time. Meeting them depends not only on a significant recovery in the economy, and the OBR is forecasting trend growth of less than 2%, <coughs> but also on the government reigning in its inclination to continue to increase public spending. We're told there'll be dire consequences for tax and public spending if uh, this motion is defeated tonight. We've borrowed £400 billion. Where are the dire warnings about that? It seems that £4 billion is really bad news. £400 billion, who cares? Now, finally, as has been pointed out, the two tests have only been met in one calendar year in the last 20. I have been in this House for nearly a quarter of a century. During that time, I have never voted against a three-line whip from my party. As Prime Minister, I suffered at the hands of rebels. I know what it is like to see party colleagues voting against their government. We made a promise to the poorest people in the world. The government has broken that promise. This motion means that promise may be bro broken for years to come. With deep regret, I will vote against the motion today.